Hi, this is Eric for Ochoy. In this section of videos, we're going to take a look at working with textures when rendering with Octane from Maya. If you take a look at the Hypershade, when you have Octane from Maya installed, you'll find that there is an Octane section, and this contains all of the Octane nodes that are available. I'm going to expand the Octane Textures section right here, so you can see if I click on Octane Textures, you can see here are all the textures available, and then they've also been organized into subgroups here just for convenience. Whenever you're working with Octane for Maya, you want to use Octane nodes only. You don't want to use Maya textures or Maya nodes or Arnold textures or Arnold nodes or any other rendering nodes that are outside of Octane or not native to Octane. So that is the one restriction you need to keep in mind when shading with Octane. So over the next few videos, we'll take a look at each section and I'll talk about some of the more important aspects of these different types of textures. For more detailed information, you'll want to go to the online documentation and click on Maya right here. This will take you to the complete Octane for Maya documentation and you can see under Octane textures, there is uh, detailed descriptions of each type of texture here. So the first grouping under Octane Textures is simply called Texture, and it just has a few fairly straightforward nodes here. We have a Float Texture, Gaussian Spectrum, OSL, RGB Spectrum, and Tune Ramp. So I've discussed the Tune Ramp Texture in the video on Tune Materials, and I have a video on OSL uh, nodes, so we'll discuss OSL Texture in that video. So in this section, we'll just talk about these three, and they're pretty straightforward, the Float, Gaussian Spectrum, and RGB Spectrum Texture. So I'll select the torso here of our alien, and I'm just going to apply a glossy material. Let's, let's graph the input and output connections of that material, and click on float texture. So the float texture is simply a float value, meaning it goes from 0 to 1. If I select the glossy material, a middle mouse button, drag this over the diffuse slot, and then select on this node, you can see it just gives us a slider that goes from 0 to 1. And we can also type in values. So I could type in five or something like that. Pretty straightforward. And you can use this within more complex nodes if you just need some kind of numeric input um, for your shader network. As just a color node, it's not all that useful. Let's break the connection there. And I'll click on Octane Gaussian Spectrum Texture. And let's put this into that diffuse input. and select the node. And so this allows us to determine a color based on wavelength, wavelength width, and power sliders. We can also put textures in here for more complex, um, for more complex shading networks. But you can see as I move these sliders, I'm getting different colors. And then this slider down here determines the power or the overall brightness of the texture. So it's just another way to create a color value. So let's break that connection really quickly. And then finally, the Octane RGB Spectrum Texture. This is probably the easiest of all to understand because it's really just another way to create a color. If I select this, I have an RGB color input and I can dial in a color using Maya's Color Picker. That's all there is to it. So those textures are pretty straightforward. So in the next video, let's take a look at working with Octane image textures.